people think oh religious faith means irrationality mm-hmm. and science rationality but uh, rationality is present in both the 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 question is what is the foundation of that rationality right and what is its goal the rationality is is merely a, a mode of thinking and why should we give up any mode of thinking the question is what is the foundation of that rationality is it shabda praman or is it your own sense experience is the foundation and what is its goal is your goal to understand the nature of human beings and 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 the world or is your goal to understand krishna right so and and in each case the rationality has a different role to play so sometimes people i mean it is clear you are not saying this but sometimes people will speak of religion as as uh, as different from rationality as if religion is irrational but i remember uh, going to your point about ravindra suraprabhu how one time i was reading the commentary of ramanuja acharya on shri bhashya uh, his commentary on on vedanta sutra called shri bhashya hmm. he gave a wonderful argument for the existence of god and i was so happy reading it and then he proceeded to destroy the argument yeah all that section that's amazing yeah all to prove that tarko pratishthana that the lord is not establishable purely on the basis of logic but what was interesting is that to show that the lord was not provable by logic by tarka he was using logic alone right he was using logical thinking to prove that okay in other words logic rationality is a tool and a devotee is happy to use it when it becomes useful in krishna's service and happy to leave it behind when it is simply an impediment in krishna's service so so in that way we are we are neither rationalists nor irrationalists rationality we accept and we say yukta vairagya it's useful for krishna's service i will use it but my identity my the basis of my faith is not exclusively on reason my identity is krishna das my faith is much broader than just mere reason and but when it is useful i am happy to use it just like that devotee in uh, the the uh, shakshi gopa story right he reasons with krishna if you can talk you can walk right now this is using simple logic mm. but is uh, that lo- that rationality that logic was useful and krishna was very pleased by it it was very sweet for krishna ah good point nice point you're making right it's a logical point yeah even we don't leave we're talking with krishna we log- rationality may be useful but it is a tool for the devotee never the goal never the object jnana karma adyana yeah beautifully put so when you talk about rationality the foundation by foundation what you mean is that say empirical because i see and i see the world observe the world around me and i think maybe the world is rational there is a rational order in the world let me figure it out so in one sense empirical observation is the basis of my rationality or i understand that there is a divine source to the world and that divine source has permeated the world with the with rationality so in that sense my the foundation of my rationality is itself uh, is 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 krishna and the goal is also krishna or yes. it is that the foundation is the world and the goal is also the world yes okay. yes beautifully put because every rationality has to begin with certain axiomatic truths that are cannot be proven through logic at any before applying reason you have to begin some place reason has to stand on something yeah. and what it stands on is our axiomatic truths that cannot be proven just like my guru maharaj hanumat preshak swami he gives a very nice example of euclid's geometry mm-hmm. and the, if you study you uh, euclid's geometry there are certain axioms that it begins with right that the, the okay what is a line now we can understand the line through logic the shortest distance between two points is a line mm. okay this is this is logic but you can then push further and say what is a point and a point is defined as something with no length no width no height and no mass mm. now that is essentially therefore illogical it is beyond rationality the point because there is nothing there is nothing that it is beyond the senses there is nothing that you can see smell touch hear taste you your mind cannot even conceive of anything in your mind think of a point but what you have thought of has some length it has some width it has some shape 
it, it probably even has a color to it. Mm-hmm. But Euclid is defining it as something that is different from all of that, right? Mm-hmm. It's based on how, how the Advaitins describe Brahman, neti, 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 as the starting point. Now, that is an axiom. How do you know that the point is right? That, that there is such a thing as a point? Those axioms of Euclid's geometry, the only way you know they are true is that they feel right, right? And feeling means rasa. Something in us tells us ah, that feels right to, to define a point like that. There's no instrument in the world, no rationality that can explain it, but it feels right. And so ultimately, as you're saying so nicely, that the foundation has of rational, rationality is a tool. You have to ask yourself, what is the foundation of my rationality? What is, and that foundation will always be based on feeling. It will always be based on, on rasa, on bhakti, on shraddha, on trust. It will be based on something that is transrational, that is beyond rationality. And for us, what feels right are certain axiomatic truths, namely that the world is a personal place. God is a person, we are personal, and everything around us is personal and relatable. relatable. This is an axiomatic understanding of the way that rasa works, that our world works. The scientific perspective may begin with a certain set of axioms, that the only things that are worth studying or perceiving or or understanding are those things that can be perceived by the five senses, right? So everyone begins from some place that is unprovable and is heading towards some place that is unprovable. Rationality is a useful tool in between, but it doesn't define either the beginning point or the end. Excellent. Beginning from the unprovable, going to the unprovable. Yeah. I think God's incompleteness theorem is also something similar that every system of knowledge requires some propositions that cannot be proven by that system of knowledge that exists outside the system. I'm, I'm paraphrasing it. Yeah, that's true. So now this, I'm, not, I'm intrigued by your, your in that sense of feeling is rasa. That's interesting because even Einstein has famously said that the intuitive mind is superior to the rational mind. And most scientific advancements also happen primarily to intuition. And this is how it is. You can call it intuition, you can call it inspiration, but it's not just reason. So in a sense, you get the sense that this is right. And then gradually through reasoning, we come to think, yeah, maybe this, maybe this is how it is right. Yes. So 